Thank you for joining us for Biotone's Trigger Point Therapy Protocol video. During this session, we'll be using the Controlled Glide Massage Cream, and we'll show a client intake, postural charting, and Trigger Point Therapy session for the upper body. The first part of our Trigger Point Therapy session is to assess our client, see how she's doing, where her posture is, and where we think there might be limited range of motion or postural compensations. So I'm just going to break out my phone here and take a couple of quick pictures, one in each plane of motion. I'm going to try to get her whole body in there, okay, and then turn to the back, please. Perfect. Put your feet hip width apart. Close your eyes. We have her close her eyes so that we turn the writing reflexes off. Great. And then turn and face me. All the way. Mm -hmm. Great. Hip width apart. Walk in place a little bit. Close your eyes. Let your arms dangle. Deep breath in. Great. I'll use those pictures to show my client her posture so she can see where her deviations are. And now I'm going to do an objective postural assessment using my palm. A palm or palpation meter measures the distance between two palpated points in centimeters and the inclination between two points in degrees. The tool allows me to objectively measure skeletal alignment. I'll use the palm to measure hip height, shoulder height, pelvic tilt, and scapular protraction. As a reminder, there are three anatomical planes of motion that we're assessing. Transverse, which divides the body into top and bottom, sagittal, which divides into left and right, and frontal, which divides into front and back. Ideal posture occurs when all three planes of motion intersect at 90 degree angles. This results in equilibrium and minimal gravitational pull on the body. When the human body is not properly aligned, it can experience a number of problems, including limited range of motion, pain, and joint, ligament, tendon, and muscle stress and dysfunction. If you do not have a palm or other objective measuring tool, you can subjectively assess your client by palpating bony landmarks to note differences in height, rotation, and tilt. You can also use a postural analysis grid chart and take photos to help maximize visual assessment. During my assessment, I'm going to have my client bend down to touch her toes. As she completes the movement, I'll check range of motion and visually assess spinal deviations. Here you can see an image where the black area is ideal movement, and then the body obviously represents what the client's able to do. I'll also have my client perform a number of other range of motion exercises to assess limitations, such as having her reach her arm over her head, rotating her arm, bringing her leg behind her back, doing back bends and side bends. In addition to postural analysis and range of motion testing, I'll conduct a complete client interview, including intake form and conversing with my client to identify her subjective complaints and treatment goals. Now that we've done an intake with the client and we're ready to chart her postural analysis results, go ahead and open up our chart here. You can use a, lots of printouts with this, but you basically just want all of the skeletal structure so you can map it. And in her case, her right hip was five degrees high. Her right shoulder was also five degrees high. And her right shoulder blade was three centimeters from her spine. Her left shoulder blade was two centimeters from her spine. She had a little bit of a thoracic curve going on. And then her shoulder was moving forward from the right to the left, and her hip was moving forward from the left to the right. Her PSI tilt on the right side was a 10 degree tilt, which is about what we want. And her left hip was at a six degree tilt, is going to put some pressure there at the sacral iliac joints. She told us that she experienced pain along the right side of her body, in the shoulder and the neck, and that she gets headaches that can concentrate on the right side as well, and she has pain at the top of the shoulder around the um, superior angle of the scapula. Her head is also forward from the ear, as well as her shoulders, but her hips line up nicely. So that'll give us a good start to kind of figure out where her body is compensating for what she has going on and help lead us to the best spots to work on her. I'm gonna start the session with some gentle rocking and compressions just to kind of 
warm up the tissue. And we'll apply some of our product. Today I'm using Controlled Glide Massage Cream, which is a great product for trigger point therapy because it allows me to get good long effleurage strokes to start with, but as I work, it absorbs into the tissue and becomes more tacky. So it doesn't limit my ability to control when I want to do long holds or slower movements. I'm going to spend a little extra time or tension in areas that I'm planning on trying to find some trigger points because I don't want to come in and release that tissue. And trigger points are taut little bands of tissue where the sacromeres aren't able to release their contraction in the muscle fibers. So that causes a oxygen deprivation in that area because since they can't open and close or contract and expand the way that they're intended to, they can't pump the blood in, get all that nutrients in, and they can't get all the waste products out. So you're gonna have waste products that are released and I'm gonna wanna come in and make sure that this tissue is opened so that when I release the trigger points, all of those byproducts can get out and that oxygen can start to get in. So I'm work that. And then I'm gonna come in and also do a little bit of movement so that not only are we starting to release the soft tissue, but I wanna to try to get a little movement in through the ligaments as well and the joints. So I'm gonna do some rotations and I'm gonna move her through the frontal plane utilizing instantaneous axis of rotation to try to get a little bit of movement deeper into the joint. Now that I've opened the tissue and I'm ready to start looking for and treating trigger points, what am I feeling for? I'm going to palpate the tissue at a relatively light pressure and I'm looking for taut bands of tissue that run longitudinally through the, the muscle. And again, the sarcomeres are down in the individual muscle fibers and they're contracted and they're holding that contraction, which is causing a, a small contracted area, but then the tissue around that is stretched and that's what's creating that taut band, the stretched tissue on either side with the little trigger point in the middle. So I'm gonna feel for the taut band and then once I find one, I'm gonna kind of palpate looking for, it might feel like a, a little pea or a grain of sand within that tissue. We've got one right here, it feels like. And I'm gonna press on it and my intent is to come in on a scale of one to 10 at about a seven. And so, is that, is that tender right there? Okay, and when I press on it, does it refer anywhere? Does it send pain to any other area or does it stay localized in this spot? Okay. And on a scale of one to 10, what would you say that that, that pressure is? 10 being the worst pain ever and one being no pain at all. Okay, so I'm gonna lighten up a little because I wanna be more at a seven. How about now? Okay, and so it's again uh, on a scale of one to 10. Okay. So I'm gonna hold that for six, seven, eight, maybe 10 seconds. And I'm gonna have my client take nice deep breaths in and out. And I'm gonna maintain the same depth and the same pressure the whole time. And then um, for you, does that sensation, is it staying the same? Is it getting to be more or is it getting to be less? It's decreasing, okay. And what would you say on a scale of one to 10 you're at now? Okay. And so again, deep press in and out. And let me know when it's decreased to say a one or a two. Okay. So then I'm gonna come off the trigger point and I'm gonna just kind of do some effleurage. Again, that tissue is all contracted, it's got byproducts in there, and I want to get the blood flowing. So after each hold, I'm going to kind of come in and do a little effleurage. And now I'm going to come to the same 
area, but maybe from a little bit of a different angle. I'm using my fingertips, but I could use my elbow, or I could use another tool. It just depends on what you're comfortable with and what's appropriate for where you're working. Now, another way that we could do this, so you can, you can find and press and hold, but we could also come in and do some skin rolling, working up underneath to kind of see if we can find any of those points that are in the superficial tissue, so like right in here. Deep breath in and out. What's the scale, one to 10 there? Okay, so right at a seven. And let me know when we get down to one or two. Scale of one to 10. Okay, lighten up a little bit now. Is that increasing, huh? It's just staying the same. Okay, so when you hit a trigger point that just kind of stays the same, it doesn't increase and decrease, you may want to come in and do a little effleurage over it. Come back onto the point with a lighter pressure. The tissue might just be so hyper irritable that it, it's going to take a little bit more coaxing. So my back on it there. Okay, and what's the, the pressure? Okay, let me lighten up even a little bit more. And now, okay, so I went way down to a two. All right, so I'm gonna increase my pressure back a little bit. And now, okay, so I'm gonna hold it at a six. Let's see if we get some change. And I can already feel the tissue starting to twitch a little. Um, a, a local twitch response is very typical as a trigger point starts to release. And then what's your scale now? Okay, it's already at a two. So we would continue that same technique through the tissue. And there are mapped, trigger points are mapped. So you can find them in other places, but there are typical mapped trigger points. So utilizing a trigger point therapy chart that shows you the, the trigger points that are mapped, as well as the referral zones. So referral zones are, we're gonna press on it here, but the client may feel the pain somewhere else. And those zones that the pain can refer to are mapped out. To work the upper trapezius, I'm going to get an angle where I can lift and roll the tissue so I can get underneath the edge. This is the area that our client came in complaining about. Uh, a, a trigger point that the client rolls into the office already knowing exists and saying, ooh, it hurts right here, is an active trigger point. It hurts even when it's not pressed upon and it can refer pain to another area. A latent trigger point, on the other hand, the client may not even know that they have. Uh, and, it, and they find out when you press on it and they go, oh, what's that? So what I'm doing right now is I'm just searching through the tissue, feeling for a taunt band, and I feel a little something right, right there. How does that feel to you? All right, she feels some pressure. Is there any pain? On a scale of one to 10, what is that pain level? An eight, I'm gonna lighten up. Okay, is that referring anywhere? Do you feel a sensation anywhere else other than where I'm pressing? Okay, kind of up into her head, which is a typical referral pattern of this mapped trigger point. Now latent trigger points, they can become active if they become overloaded in the tissue. They can even be caused by a primary trigger point. Primary and secondary trigger points are both types of active trigger points. They're just subgroups. Primary trigger point develops from the initial muscle being overloaded. Again, that's what the client comes in complaining about. And then secondary trigger points develop as a result of the primary trigger point being left untreated 
and they can come in two forms. One is a functional trigger point, which is basically the result of the, the muscle that the primary trigger point is located in not being able to do its job, and another muscle group taking over, and then that, that muscle group that took over becoming overloaded and developing trigger points of their own. Or it can happen because the muscles that stabilize that joint have to contract constantly to create the stabilization and then they become overloaded from stabilizing. Um, secondary trigger points that are called satellite are trigger points that become active because they exist in the referred pain zone. Our client here said that when I press she feels a little bit of referred pain up into her head and so this area here where the referred pain is these muscles might contract around that pain, and if that goes on for an extended period of time, then trigger points can develop in that area as well. And those are the ones that we call satellite. So we've come through and we've worked part of the upper, middle, and lower trapezius. And we're gonna turn the client over and try to get into some of the other musculature that could be causing her primary complaint. So now my client's in a supine position. We can look and see that this shoulder is much lower than the right shoulder. The right shoulder is, is really extended off of the table. And there seems to be some shortening through the pectoralis muscles. We would definitely want to come through and work those as well. We're going to start here with the upper trap. And there, this is all really taut tissue. So I'm going to bring her elbow up a little bit. That'll give me a, a little bit of a looser angle here and let me grab the tissue a little better. I'm going to start just kind of feeling again for taut band. There we go. All right. What does that feel like right there for you? Like a mate. Okay. Kind of slipped off it a little, so I'm just going to use my thumb here to give me a little back up, hold that in place. All right, am I still on it? Yeah. Scale of one to ten. Eight. Okay, lighten up a little. Deep breaths for me. Great. Is it reducing, staying the same, or increasing? It's reducing. Okay. Let me know when it gets to that one or two. Now, if you can't use your thumb like that or that bothers you, come in with fingers and just do pressure down. So does that feel like I'm on the same spot there? Yes. Okay. Scale of one to 10. Seven. Okay. Let me know when it gets to one or two. One. All right, well, reduced really fast. I can also come in and use knuckles. And this can be a little harder to hold. All right, am I on it? Yes. Okay, scale of one to 10. Eight. Okay, so back in an eight, I'm gonna lighten up a little now. Six. Okay, we're at a six. Nice deep breaths in and out. Let me know when it reduces. As you work trigger points, your clients will start to understand what's expected of them and what you're looking for. You won't have to ask them every time. They'll just, you'll hit it and they'll go eight, and then they'll say two, and they'll kind of start cueing you instead of you cueing them. So we're gonna move up to our mapped trigger point in upper trapezius, it's trigger point one. Feel like I'm quite right on it yet. What does that feel like there? Like a seven. Okay. Any anything happening there? Um, I feel like it's going all over this place. Mm -hmm. Like into my temple and my jaw. Okay. So when I, this trigger point we've worked on with her before, so I knew that it had some referral. So I was just kind of asking her, I didn't want to cue her, but I wanted to see. And she's, it, it, the similar symptoms that we've expressed before, where there's a referral zone through the temple, into her jaw, um, and along the side of her head. 
So as I hold that, I'm gonna kind of come in and I'm gonna start working within that referral zone, looking for any of those secondary trigger points that might have developed in there, those satellite trigger points. And I'm gonna feel for a tom band and then feel for a little knot within the tom band. I'm not gonna press really hard here. It's very, very thin tissue. Continuing with stretching for the, all the areas that were targeted in the treatment today, I'm gonna to do a cross body stretch, grabbing the elbow just above the elbow, reaching with my hand across, grabbing the shoulder, and then dropping back on my foot to bring her body across, reach my arm around and underneath to the low back, holding the hip, and I'm gonna do a long stroke up, pulling down on the shoulder, and lifting up through the neck, and then rolling her back down. I'd repeat that on the other side. Maybe do any other stretches that made sense for the areas that we targeted. And I might even close out with a full body gentle Swedish massage, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, just to integrate everything and make the session feel complete. I'd also remind the client to drink lots of water and to um, do some gentle stretching and movement and to call me if there was any issues or problems or concerns that they may have as they may feel a little bit sore and achy after a trigger point therapy session. A few things to consider when providing your clients with trigger point therapy. Pay attention to contraindications such as acute muscle trauma, inflammation, and dermatological issues. Also, if you're working a trigger point and it's not releasing, it might be secondary instead of primary. You can ask yourself a couple of questions. What primary trigger point might refer to the area where you're working? And what other muscle groups might the tissue that holds the trigger point you're working on be acting as an antagonist or synergist for? You can use the answers to those questions to backtrack and find the primary trigger point. There are many resources available to help you refine your trigger point therapy skills. Referral zone charts and trainings. Make sure you check out your options and refine your skills so you can provide your clients with the best treatment possible. We hope you found this trigger point therapy video helpful. Please visit bytone.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, click on the treatment protocol link so that you can download this and other treatment protocols.